No problem. Mm-hmm. I got the idea. Let's go. They are the ones. I'm with Allah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So all Thank the you. best. Thank you. Thank you. Pass yeah. the bottle. Thank you, Father. Okay. With Allah, it's just turned four. This is also being uh, uh, streamed on YouTube, so yeah. it will be recorded. Mm-hmm. We'll pass it on to our alumni. We'll put it on the alumni website, so those who want to watch it can watch it from anywhere in the world later. No, yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Thanks. Even live, no? Yeah. Bye, Keith. Yeah. I'll I'll be in the background. I mean, I'll be there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. We are ready to begin from our end. Everything. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here with us, and a special thank you to Justice Sri Krishna for being here with us in spite of going through some kind of an emergency operation this morning. So, sir, we are very grateful to you for having been here with us. The introduction of you is really unwanted because you are known to all of us. We know you as not just the Chief Justice of the Kerala High Court. We also know you as a Judge of the Supreme High Court. We know you more specifically, sir, as being the one who headed the Sri Krishna Commission that investigated the 1992-93 Mumbai riots. what really uh, fascinated me was this aspect of you sir that you were the one who conducted the investigations into the allegations of impropriety against the then icicis ceo chanda kochar and that you were also you also handle a responsibility of the bifurcation of andhra pradesh and thank you for giving us the six pay commission because at least i was a beneficiary of the six pay commission so thank you very much for that uh members of the audience justice sri krishna has engaged with saint jeeves college on a number of occasions i am very fortunate to have this is my third uh, encounter with sir and sir came recently to talk to the masters in public policy uh, students we had a program niti samvad where sir you spoke to us about india's data protection law and what i would like you to take up over there in our discussion when we start the discussion is i read that there were two notes of dissent so how did you handle those notes of dissent when you were the head of that committee you worked you work as an independent arbitrator you are a guest lecturer across the world in, may, in many of the high uh, end universities of the of, in the globe and also with some of the un bodies members of the audience it will be very interesting to recall this fact of sir that he is a connoisseur of art culture and drama in general and is passionate about indian classical music sir we are told that you often break into sanskrit verses and you know 10 languages including italian and spanish you know sir's legal acumen sir's squeaky clean career and his track record makes him every government's favorite retired judge but this is what we love about you sir that in spite of that you have learned and you have never ever shied away from calling a spade a spade if something is gone amiss you have called you have blown the whistle you have called the shots okay and that's why we think that you are an apt person who would help us to understand the role of dissent in democracy members of the audience this is the way we will go about our proceedings with this little introduction we will so within a few seconds we'll start the chat with sir and then we will go on till about 5 o'clock sir i'll be throwing questions at you you can uh, keep uh, answering those questions and maybe in between i may uh, intervene now and then and somewhere on 5 o'clock we would have the we would throw the we throw open the our question and answer session and members of the audience would then through me get questions to you sir so with this sir can we start our uh, uh, can we start the uh, chat with you okay i want to start with this uh, what i picked up from the rojas dictionary yes the rojas thesaurus i was looking for synonyms of uh, the word dissent and i found words like non conformity dissension heresy variance orthodox heterodoxy and i would like you to start by telling us 
is dissent in itself evil or are those negative connotations indicative of a cry for change a cry for conversion a cry for correction how would you look at the word dissent because rojets gave us words that can connote negativity <laughs> look at what is nature in nature no two things are ever equal not even identical twins they have some amount of distance a, a difference which only the parents can discern but they are not and of course as they grow up even their mentality changes all five fingers are not equal in fact my left hand is not identical with my right hand my left hand the body is not but we managed to do it because we have to carry on with the work so if you have a situation of you have to talk about dissent in democracy so yes. what is that? demos in greek is populus <laughs> and the idea is that the government should be in the hands of the populace the populace must be able to say how we need to be governed how we need to govern. <laughs> yeah when you do that you contrast it with sovereignty of a king or a dictator or even a benevolent dictator it doesn't matter now there what happens is i say something you accept it i will decide what is good for you that is the contrast now the moment you say there you have democracy each person has a right to say how he needs to be governed now that doesn't mean that each person will be able to govern himself so do you have a methodology by which you say the maximum number of persons for the most greatest benefit of the the, the populace is how you decide it so a democracy naturally goes by a vote of popularity of what is the actual uh, um, decision to be conveyed so whether it is a company board or it is a societies or a trust board or even the government how do you decide it people want to govern themselves give them a vote and they will say this is the how we want to do it. but the moment you give a vote there may be dissenting opinions somebody may say i don't like this way of your uh, governing me i would like to be governed by now take a simple thing no somebody says everybody should wear a mask when you go out in the public in yeah. america they have insisted that they refuse to wear mask because it's a violation of their fundamental right now i will not take you into a debate on that whether it's good or bad but here people may say i don't want to wear a mask or let's say you have a red light and the traffic should stop at the red light there's a reason why you do it because you say that if you don't do that there is a higher probability of accidents taking place now if the people decide and say let's have a red light here so it governs the traffic somebody may say i don't like this red light because every time i have to slow down my car well you have a dissenting opinion we we'll take that into consideration we we'll look at the issue in a larger perspective and decide by a larger vote what is necessary which uh, according to the larger vote what is good for the entire community which is to be uh, governed that is the role of the dissent in democracy now i i remember you told me about dissenting voices in the commissions which i headed yes yeah why, why did it happen I, i i was chairman of the pay commission uh, no sorry in the pay commission nobody was dissenting because everybody was getting more money that's one thing uh, then protection of data loss yeah, no that was the last one even before yeah. in the andhra committee there was yeah. a dissent. Mm. Mm. and there was a dissenting voice in the fslrc which i headed yeah so when you have a dissenting voice you patiently listen to them you argue it out with them you know they say why are you dissenting now dissent is not just for the just for the uh, dissent they have a valid point to put across you consider the point, um, point that they are putting across and and debate it debate the pros and cons of it and if the majority of the people in the committee decide that no despite this the, the way we have to go way we have to go in the way this way forward and not what you are saying then the dissenter is obliged in a democracy to fall in line please note that mm. i have a right to dissent now if you remember way back i think it was the, <coughs> during the french revolution uh, the thinkers in france voltaire yeah. voltaire voltaire yeah voltaire voltaire say voltaire say i i definitely disagree with you till i i die or you die but then i will uphold your right to dissent till i die yeah mm. you have a right to dissent that doesn't mean that i am necessary necessarily i should accept your viewpoints i'll consider it but 
I am obliged to consider it. No, that is the essence of democracy. So, sir, are you saying that it's a major, uh, major, uh, majority kind of a rule, or rationality doesn't prevail in such a situation? Yeah, you see, the point is, how do you decide otherwise? Each person will have a vote. vote. Each person can think in his own fashion, in his or her own fashion. So, how do you take a decision at all? Some some rule has to be applied. The thumb rule is what is good for everybody should be good for you. That is okay. the whole idea. Now, that is the whole idea with which you go ahead. Now, sometimes in respect of, let's say, for example, in some, let's say, personal habits, everybody takes a view and says only vegetarian is good. I may not be interested in being a vegetarian or vice versa. I may say, look, it is my personal habit. I'm not causing harm to the community. I let me follow my personal uh, view mm. or religion for that matter. You can't impose religion because religion is a matter of faith. Mm. It doesn't come by a vote of democracy. Faith is something that is uh, a part and parcel of your own consciousness. Right? Now, if I believe I have faith in X religion, you can't impose religion on me. And when they did that, you saw what happened right from the time of Moses and the uh, mm. mm. how it developed in Arabia and things like that. That is the problem. You have what you think is good, you debate. Try to make them understand your point of view. Try to understand their point of view and find, find out their errors in their thinking. If it one works, wonders, fine. If it does not, give them to them. As long as they do not, by their action, harm the rest of the community. That should be the, the fundamental mm. uh, rock bottom of that. Okay. That means your dissent can be in a community, dissent can be in a country. Yes, it can be in a country. Dissent can be in the entire world. What happens in the UN? I mean, mm. in the UN, they have this, the permanent members of the right. Yeah, veto right. Yeah. Veto right. Mm. So the role of dissent in a democracy is that it is democracy's safety valve. Yes. So can there be democracy without dissent? No, there cannot be because then it is not democracy at all. The moment you say that one person out of the demos has no right to speak, it is not democracy at all because democracy is everybody in the demos. The populace at large has the right to express his or his or her opinion. Now, if the individual is denied that right, I can't call it a democracy at all. So okay. democracy and dissent go hand in hand. Oh. Then why is it that people in authority tend to think that the dissenter is an irritant? Uh, no, he's a high nuisance value. I mean, that's that's shut up. Okay. Why is it that we don't accept a dissenter in a democracy? After if you go back to Lord Acton. You remember Lord Acton is the famous lawyer mm. judge in England. <laughs> he said, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yes. A person who has got power wants to exercise it at any cost. So a dissent is a challenge to the power. Because as a man in power, you want to do ABC. The dissenter says, ABC is not correct. Let's do it E, D, E, F, or some, X, Y, Z, or something else. So that is a challenge to the man in authority. And therefore, he says, you shut up. I want to do it this way. And mm. if you don't shut up, I'm going to do something else. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Go into the dungeon or whatever it is. We have mm. seen that happening in history. Right from, if you go back all the way to the, the, the historical events, that is how, why was Christ, uh, Jesus Christ even uh, crucified? Yeah. That was because of it. He was a great dissenter, if you look at it. Yes. There was a popular religion. And he said, this is not good religion. This is how it should be done. And what I'm telling you is something that is benefit for the benefit of humanity. Well, he was a dissenter. He was entitled to it. You didn't like it. You were entitled to argue with him, convince him, or do go your own way. Instead mm -hmm. of the, what did they do? They tried to push him. Mm -hmm. was a dissenter. What was he done? What did they do with him? They subjected him to hemlock. Yeah. You see that Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was a dissenter, both in South Africa and in India. Mm -hmm. So dissent has been an essential, integral factor of democracy. You take out dissent, it you know, degenerates into some kind of a plutocracy, autocracy, or dictatorship. So as a budding dissenter, you know, many of our students are hearing you. Uh, <laughs> how would you uh, nurture the culture of dissent? Because what I'm hearing you saying is dissent is good. good. So how do we nurture the, the, the culture of dissent? Look, it's very simple. Let's say, excuse me for a moment. Yeah. 
let's say that there is some kind of a lecture in a class. The lecturer makes a proposition on any subject. Now, decency requires that you do not interrupt the person. Otherwise, what happens is chaos, nothing else. You will have chaos, nothing can be taken forward. You have a right to point out that here you are saying proposition A, but I think proposition A is wrong. Proposition B is the correct way of going about. That is the right way to decide. Mm. What happened that the lecturer still says, no, my proposition is correct. And then he says, OK, you hold your view, you hold my view. And then if it is possible, put it to vote. Let's see who goes, which majority of the, uh, the class takes which view. A simple way of solving it, instead of we back, go back to the cave ages, the cave man decided things by beating each other on the head and he, the might was yes. yeah. uh, mm. in, in civilized countries, you don't use might as a right, although some of the countries do it, we will keep them. Mm. Now we assume that everybody by right, by birth has this right of descent in a democracy. Mm. So, to democracy and the rule of law. And particularly in our country, the constitution guarantees as a fundamental right which nobody can take away. Yeah. Now, if you decide, and then how do you decide what needs to be done? The decision obviously has to come by a vote of majority, because if the majority thinks that this is the right way forward, if you are not agreeable to that, you have your own way of going anyway, what you want to do, but do not in any way cause difficulty, embarrassment, or obstruction to people who want to do it in a particular way. Take what happens in a company meeting. One single shareholder gets up and asks all kinds of questions. I've seen that happening time again, time again right from oh. the Kauba case way back. But he's entitled to, even if he has a one rupee, one rupee shareholder, he has a right to question. Yeah. But if the rest of them say, no, this company should be run only along these policies, we have to come and fall in line. That is the essence of democracy. Oh. So, sir, the nurturing of, them, of dissent in students, would reading be required? Would debating be required? Would, uh, how do you, you know, develop this? Uh, how do you sow dissent in students? Should it be the uh, institution's uh, role to be played? It should be the institution's role to make them critically think. Mm. Not simply saying that I'm the lecturer, I told you something, you just accept it. Whether it's mathematics, physics, or the public policy, or history, or geography. Mm. And points out, now, look at what the dialogue between Plato and Socrates. Now, I'm not even referring to you to the mm, enormous amount of scripture in India, in Sanskrit, where there is right from the Upanishads. If you look at the Upanishads, always it, it is critical dialogue. Somebody says something, somebody objects to it immediately. And then there is a long discussion. They didn't beat each other's brain, or they didn't say, shut up and put him on uh, the crucify him. That is the essence of democracy. You see, unfortunately, what has happened is people are unwilling to exercise this right, A, because they are too lazy, or B, because they are scared that expressing your voice of dissent might invert the wrath of those in power and have uh, adverse consequences upon you. Now, both of them are uh, deleterious to democracy. You have a right, exercise it. But remember always, the having exercise, don't hold a, don't uh, grudge or not a grudge against those persons who want to take a particular view. Well, mm. in society you have to accept it. Like if tomorrow everybody says we should all wear a jacket, I'll wear a jacket. If tomorrow says we should all wear a dhoti in this country and that is the law of the country, which has been passed by an overwhelming majority, I'll wear a dhoti. Doesn't matter. Mm. At home, I may not wear a dhoti. I may say I'll wear only a short serum, I'll wear whatever I think is comfortable to me. That's the way things should go. So the best thing is, you want dissent to be encouraged in students, you must allow them to critically think. And also, from the point of view of the institution, remember, their criticizing you is not a defiance of authority. It's a question of exercising their democratic right. Today inside the institution, tomorrow outside the institution, tomorrow in the governance field. Mm. That is how it should. Now look at what has happened in various uh, I'm not going to the uh, taking names in some of the universities, how things have come down heavily on uh, the students. Mm. Just because they were able to, they were, they got up. But again, criticism has to have, I mean, even the Supreme Court can be criticized if you ask me. 
Uh, I'm not going to do that. I was thinking of that only just now. <laughs> I knew hmm. that. See, only thing is, there is, there is a certain amount of decorum in that. After all, it's an institution which we must really look up to. Hmm. If you want to look up to something, you give it the respect it deserves, but point out, say something is wrong. Okay. Sir, so what I'm hearing you saying is institutions play an important role in nurturing this thing. So taking it to the broader level at the country level, for a democracy to be robust, it is imperative that the state should uh, welcome positive dissent and criticism. Yes, of course. Should, yes. The, should the state even attempt to muzzle and silence people, therefore? Not at all. First of all, they are not allowed to do it by the constitution. Remember, freedom of speech is a fundamental right guaranteed under this. I can uh, draw your attention to what happened during the previous, uh, long ago, during Indira Gandhi's regime. Indian Express was thought to be shut down by various... Yes, yes. Remember the Indian Express case? and the yeah, blank, blank pages, blank yeah. editorials they would leave you. How we, of course, during the emergency, we were all youngsters. I was yeah. in my 30s. So okay. How we fought against that? How even a simple criticism resulted in severe action by the authorities? Hmm. Ultimately, the Demos won the voice of the people, the Vox Populi won. I mean, yes, temporarily, authority may be able to throttle your voice. That cannot be a permanent solution. Because you throttle one voice here, ten voices will come up there. You try to throttle them, another hundred will come up there. That is how democracy works. So then how would you distinguish between violent and non-violent dissent? Oh, yes, that's why I said dissent need not be violent. See, if you look at what Gandhiji did, what look at Gandhiji's life is a good illustration. Mm. Uh, for example, take his uh, salt satyagraha. What is salt, what was salt satyagraha? The mm. British regime wanted to impose excise duty on manufacture of salt. Look, Gandhiji said, Hey, look, you're not giving us any rights. We make some, we go to the sea, get some sea water and make some salt and then why not should you charge taxes for that? We will not pay you. And he insisted that he will go and take some and go to Dandi and manufacture Dandi salt. Dandi much. Yes. Then he went to Champaran. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Indigo Blue. Right. Mm. He fought for their wages and their um, minimum conditions of service. That is a decent. Decent in terms of human rights. Decent in terms of basic human decency. No, Gandhiji did not believe in uh, picking up a rifle or an AK-47 and shooting the authority. No, he didn't. He didn't throw bombs at them. Gandhiji believed in non-violence. That was his credo. Now, whether Gandhiji is non-violence is a good thing or not, I don't want to be drawn into that. Yeah. Okay. Some, you know, that some other day we'll do it. But I'm just pointing out that was a very good example of dissent, both in South Africa. If you remember, how we were thrown out of the, of the train apartment and how mm. he so what did he do? He said, I am willing to suffer the consequences of my dissent. As long as it puts moral pressure on your conscience. And I am sure that if there is some lurking conscience somewhere, you will come to realize that what you are doing is wrong. That is all that is. Yeah. That is precisely the basis of this quit India movement. Now you go back a little, a little behind. What was American civil war about? Isn't it? No representation. Yeah. No tax. Yes. That was the popular decision that was taken across the country. And that mm. to their um, Boston. The Boston Tea Party. Yeah. All of us have read history, we know what happened. Go back further up. What was this Magna Carta about? Yes. There was a king of England who thought that he was he had the divine power to do anything and the king could do no wrong. That was their their the legacy yeah. from mm. But then the people said, sorry, we don't agree with you. And there because they were sought to be suppressed violently. You had all those uh, chamber... Uh, yeah. Five star, what do you call them? Star chamber hearings. Mm. So ultimately, the whole thing exploded and then Magna Carta was signed and Magna Carta said everybody has a right. Parliament was established and Parliament is really the home ground for democracy, home ground for dissent to be expressed. Otherwise, what is the purpose of parliament? If parliament has to simply stamp on what the power says, why do we need a parliament? Why do we need a debate then? Hmm. You need a debate because you want to see the pros and the cons. 
If you shut your eyes to the cons and you see only the pros, you don't need a parliament at all. Then there is no difference between a dictatorship and a, a parliamentary democracy. This is the same thing. You go history, wherever you go, this is exactly what you will find. And now you are talking of how far can dissent take? Now, unfortunately, even in India, if you remember, Gandhiji gave a fillet to the non-violent movement. But then some of the hotheads there decided that no, no, we should short circuit it. We should yeah. throw bombs at the British officers, killed some of them, and then you came all kinds of violence erupted. Yeah. Mm. Gandhiji didn't agree with it till the end, till he died. He was willing to sacrifice his life. Whether it is in India or whether it is the Martin Luther King, same thing. The dissent does not have to be accompanied by violence. If it is accompanied by violence, then what happens is you are giving in to authority. You are, I mean, it's a very simple thing. I, I, I believe that I am not a great student of Bible or anything like that. So if you call me names, if I call you names, I am giving an opportunity to you to prove that I am not a gentleman. Mm. Otherwise, why did Christ try to say it? Somebody slaps you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. Mm. That is the reason. Because ultimately, violence is not going to solve the problem. It is going to lead to further violence. In fact, if you remember, you were talking of the commission of uh, inquiry, which I had in mm. the 90s. See, what happened then is, there was this section of the Muslim populace, hot-headed people. Yeah. They wanted to express their uh, anger because of the demolition of the Babri Masjid. Yes, sir. Now, their anger was sought to be throttled. The moment it was in, and there was a lot of violence used in the report is... Uh, yes. When that was used, what was the consequence? They decided to import all those fellows who were waiting outside the country to come and destroy the country. So that led to the March series of bombings. Mm. That was one of the findings. And because you did not allow them to demonstrate peacefully here, they went and so history tells us this, no? Wherever a king has not allowed somebody to do something, he has the habit of going and uh, your enemy is uh, my, uh, my friend. friend. That's exactly what happens. So it is better to allow dissent. Dissent really works as a safety ball. Okay. So dissent is not something that is macho. No, you don't show no, your macho-ness because I of dissent. Father, you can make a proposition and I can dissent with you. And at the end of which we come out and shake hands and have a cup of tea together if we were together. Hmm. That doesn't make you my, my, my enemy, nor do I become your enemy. But if I were to say you don't agree with me, then I throw a bomb at you. That is not decent. That is basic lack of human decency. So would you agree with this without dissent, corruption and unethical and immoral issues and actions of the governance can go unchecked? Isn't therefore dissent a way of keeping a nation's conscience alive? Yes. It is really, what is dissent? Dissent is really a, an occasion for making you accountable to what you are required to do. You are required to govern the country without corruption. I, I'm saying when I mean you, I mean the government. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> without the government is bound to carry on. But if I find I have access to something or there are some facts which show that this has been done because of ulterior motives, maybe because of uh, uh, what they call Pati uh, Jawad in Hindi, that is the uh, personal relationship. Hmm. Cron uh, what do you call it? What, what capitalism? Crony capitalism. Huh? Crony capitalism. Hmm. Because of bribery or because of any other improper motive. Anybody in the country who has access to this information, you can try to get up and say, hey, why have you done this? If you don't do it, how will all this come to light? And is it not the requirement of every polity, every governance system, that it should be done in an honest manner? And if there is somebody who is, you know, there is a very, I don't know, in the world, Kabir once said that a person who criticizes you is like a bar of soap. Keep him always near you. You always mm -hmm. like 
accentuating terroric terrorism in the country or for propagating terrorism in the country is it in the interest of the rights of everybody else certainly going to affect their rights therefore there is a limitation put on constitution uh, that in no circumstances you can take and of course there is elaborate machinery so that the right is, the right of the state is not misused there is a methodology by which this is true of in fact this is true of all fundamental rights under article 19 particularly for association now if my association is to uh, let's say debate all legal issues in the country i can debate anything i can say the supreme court judgment is wrong because according to me this principle that advocated by supreme court is wrong what is wrong in that absolutely correct if your voice can in fact you know that is i have always lamented that there is very little legal critique of judgments in this country go to england is that allowed sir of course it is allowed people have no idea now what makes you hello as a sitting judge i have criticized the supreme court you know that and it is oh. published in a law journal i said what you are doing is wrong you are going into unnecessary pils and doing the institute of course i did it in a very you read it it's like a judge's uh, writing okay that is permitted why not in fact that could be permissible because what am i doing i am not doing something against the interest of the country i am doing something very much in the interest of the country how the supreme court should behave in my view is abc you may agree may disagree that's your privilege but saying that in my privilege by saying that am i going to harm somebody else then you put a restriction on my part now i am talking to you online am i advancing the interest of the country the interest of the student the interest of your institution or am i harming it mm. you are harming it at any point shut me off that should be the test that can be the restriction now if i were to go online and say hey boys and girls let's all throw stones at the legislature let's all throw uh, let's all carry uh, weapons and go and shoot all the politicians all the judges and all your uh, teachers that is bad that is exactly where the study actually the law of sedition is being misused by every police in this yeah. country hmm. sedition is bad first of all let's understand why sedition came into being sedition was an invention of the british regime they did not like the local populace the natives as they call them to criticize the british sovereignty and the representation or representative of the sovereign so any criticism of the government was called sedition now hmm. that law has gone up around uh, the block a lot of judgments came into it and very learned judges have went into it and said a hey, sedition is a right in a democracy i have, i don't have to be in love with the government at all i can criticize the government every day but i am doing it in a manner that doesn't incite people to violence if i say let's say uh, the people have done it in the newspapers you read it every day if i say the gdp has been wrongly calculated and therefore the gdp figures are wrongly given by the government what is wrong in that if i say the supreme court judgment in such and such is wrong because of this reason now that is my view i have a right to express my view maybe supreme court doesn't agree with it you may not agree with it the rest of the country may not agree with it but i have a right to hold my view as long as i am not harming the fabric of society the moment it tears asunder the fabric of society the law steps in the constitution takes away the, the privilege the constitution takes away the privilege of the fundamental that is how freedom of speech works that is how the freedom of association works that is how dissent really should work so but in the current times there are two ways in which you can dissuade me from being a dissenter yes. one is you send the gundas after me <laughs> okay you create hell for me you break my head and those kind of things yeah. the other one is you pick me up and take me to jail yes both are wrong according to you both are wrong. yeah both are wrong. yeah man so no, where's, but... the redre- where's the where's the redressal sir i'll come to the redressal both are reminiscent of what used to happen during the cave days hmm. during the cave days each fellow carried a huge uh, bludgeon and if i disagree with you right answer oh. is you agree or i hit you on the head hmm. that is done by the gundas that is also been done by the government elected both hmm. are right now what is the what is the remedy against that this is where the institution like a court the judiciary comes into play it is the job now look at what happened during the emergency also if you remember the emergency of course you will remember the emergency the kids were not mm. 
mm. probably half of them are not even caught at that time. Yes. Now, during the emergency, anybody who was criticizing the government was immediately rounded up. Yeah. So, I believe that almost every high court struck down those detention orders. Of course, the Supreme Court yielded ground and then you know how it mm. was. Yes. The ADM Jamal Board case. Mm. We overruled by just the son of the famous judge. Chandra Chodhi. Yeah. Saying that it is a shame, it's a blot on the description of the Supreme Court history. So therefore, ultimately, what do you need to see? You need to see that we have a constitution beautifully designed. What does the constitution do? Constitution says, hey, there will be three, four polit three, four organs. Actually, it's basically three organs. Yeah. One is the legislature, which will make the laws, executive, which will implement the laws. And then the judiciary, which will act as an arbiter in case of any dispute between citizen and citizen, or citizen and any one of these organs, or between organs inter se. Mm. Any dispute can be taken to the court. And it is the obligation of the court. I'm not only saying right, I'm saying the obligation of the court. For example, Article 32 of the Constitution is a fundamental right. Nobody can take away Article 32, by even by a, a uh, 100% majority parliament cannot overrode it thanks to the Keshwan on the Bharti case. That is a permanent feature of the constitution. <coughs> Indelible, non derogable feature of the constitution. So, Article 32 says any person who is, whose fundamental rights are affected is entitled to go before the Supreme Court, get a petition, and say, This is my fundamental right. These are its rights. Please give me relief. Court is obliged to do it. Or you go under 226 to the High Court and say, this is the way the government has behaved, this is how I've been uh, harassed, or this is how, as you say, gundas have been uh, sick on me, or the government has uh, arrested me for some saying something unpalatable to them. What is happening every day? You read them in the newspaper. Courts have yeah. been quick to uh, quash the orders. Is that, that is the mm. job of the judiciary. So the, that is why it is important to keep the judiciary away from all this. It's good to keep them on a pedestal. Oh. What is on the pedestal we have, we think is holy. And what we think is holy, we unhesitatingly bow down to. And that is necessary. I cannot get, sorry, I'll, I'll give you one more example. Yeah. You have a cross on a pedestal. Mm. What is a cross? Basically, a cross is nothing but a wooden piece, two wooden pieces stuck together, right? Mm. But you don't consider it as the two wooden pieces, do you? Correct, you consider yeah. it as symbolic of the Lord Himself. Yeah. Right? You think that by praying in front of this cross, I am praying to the Lord Himself. Yeah. Now, if you had that kind of an attitude to the judiciary, all this nonsense would not be there. Sir, since you spoke about Justice Chandrachud, yes. very recently the, the younger Chandrachud yes. said that we Indians tend to be very accommodative and therefore we are not very uh, dissentful. We tend to be, says Amartya Sen, we are very argumentative and therefore we want to dissent. Now, from the legal point of view, and then you have an economist also saying that, uh, so are we argumentative Indians or are we accommodative Indians? Actually, if you ask me, history of India, as I told you, our literature is filled with argumentation right from the Upanishads part on. Yes, you said that, sir. Yeah. yeah. Every argument, counter argument. Argument, counter argument. Counter argument, counter argument. That is really, in a sense, argumentative in India. Mm. Now, you also have this kind of argumentative. You get into the bus, you don't want to pay the thing. Are kya paisa dene ke kya darurat hai? Ah. I mean, if you ask me, it's tomorrow, Bob ka bus hai kya? <laughs> right? ah. Yesterday, I, I had this incident. Somebody was. <laughs> Bringing his dog, and the dog, you know, dog being a dog, was defecating within the compound. Uh -huh. The building shouted at him. She said, Tomara Bapka kya jata hai. <laughs> now, the answer to that can be what? He can lodge a police complaint. He can go and file a, crime, a petition before the High Court of Bombay. He is going to waste his time on that. So, therefore, he says, I am accommodating to help with this guy. Give him some gali and let him go. That is where the accommodation comes. You go to a, you reserve a seat in the, in the train and somebody is occupying it. 
वो इंटेलिजेंट मेरा जीज माय सेट इज तो क्या है आप चाहिए तो इतना इतना में बैठो आप उधर बैठो इवन इन सिस्ट एंड पर्टिकुलरली इन द स्टेट ऑफ बिहार देयर इज अ सेइंग जिसका डंडा उसका भाईस हां दैट दैट्स वी टेकिंग यू बैक टू द केव राज यू नो केव मैन वाज दैट एग्जैक्टली द केव मैन सेइंग जिसका डंडा उसका भाईस जिसका डंडा उसका लाठी दैट इज राइट नाउ why are we becoming very accommodative this is because you have a right to move the court all right now i don't like what somebody did to me my choice is to file a suit now i file a suit and the suit doesn't come up for hearing for 25 years what am i going to do in the meanwhile all my property will be lost all my money will be gone and i'll be continuously uh, continuously harassed every day this is the reason why we become a habit man accommodative there is in a country like england or united states if thing can be in quickly resolved the judge will decide it and then give you some relief or the other that is why we have become accommodative and we have become argumentative in a pejorative sense we curse each other and think that that is the end of the debate so you know these two attributes of human life accommodative and argumentative is now being interpreted differently in in the polity of the country if i am accommodative i am patriotic And if i am argumentative i am anti national <laughs> that is so how do we resolve this how do you reconcile this uh, aspect of dissent is fundamental in democracy it is least that kind of an argument has no validity mm. i am being very circumspect in the usage of my language yes sir look accommodative does not mean you are dumb driven cattle we are not We claim that we have any right to call ourselves a democratic, constitutional, constitutionally democratic country, wedded to the rule of law. We are not dumb rebel guys. We have the right to say this is wrong. This thus far and no further. If you are wholeheartedly agreeing with the government or the people in authority, if you honestly believe that they are right, well, that is your privilege. I am not saying that is wrong. You have you have a right to believe that. You believe it. but that doesn't that doesn't take away my patriotism my patriotism is to my country not to the person who may be in power today and be thrown out tomorrow or power day after tomorrow so i love my country and therefore i am pointing out to you that you are wrong because i want the country to survive even if if your fellows are thrown out of power that should be the real argument so that is not accommodation that is not dissent sorry that is dissent and that is not trouble making you have a right to point out why because you think honestly pointing out will lead to the good of the country oh. so for example take uh, that judgment in sabari mala case oh. so everybody may who ha about it that was just that was raised was women's rights don't forget that the lady on the bench Had the courage to dissent, and she gave excellent uh, reasoning. He says religion is a matter of faith, so it is not a matter of Article 14 versus Article 31 uh, and uh, Article uh, 31 or 30. He says each operates in an independent fashion. So when it's a question of faith, you cannot enforce faith by a rule of law. Oh. I cannot say that you believe in me. Otherwise, we'll go back to the the days when the Christians were thrown out to the lions because they did not agree with what somebody else said. You can't do that. That's not the essence of democracy. On the contrary, that's why I say we had great people in this country, and who were willing to listen to the, the, the arguments and then point out the error in the argument. That is what is necessary. So the error is not pointed out by wielding a sword or putting him in the in the current equivalent of putting him in jail or something like that, but by argumentation in that sense we are an argumentative country and we ought to be an argumentative country and if you claim that we are democratic so then we have do we have a right to come up with laws like upa uapa or tada okay where you are just it catching me and putting me and shutting me up forever they are intended for the purpose that's correct that you are right they are intended for the purpose of suppressing of criminal activity if you go back to tada what was tada about Tada was uh, terrorism and 
disruptive activity something like ah that. disruptive activity act yeah terrorism anti something and disruptive activity now if i indulge in terrorism my rights are uh, are bound to be curtailed mm. so you cannot say that i should give the same fundamental right to a terrorist which i would give to somebody else like for example the right of speech and if i were to send emails to 1000 people inciting them to throw bombs at everybody every institution that would be a terrorism or if i say let's all go and uh, throw a bomb at a mass congregation or something like that what is going to happen it's going to kill innocent people it's not a killing is permitted only by law where across the border we want to fight fight with the chinese mm. Mm. we will we will say uh, hail be glory be to you but not this kind of thing you don't throw a bomb in a in a masjid or in a church or in a temple and kill innocent people who are there who have no intention of harming you or anybody else such people need to be dealt with severely therefore you have a tada you have the whatever the new api and yeah name of whatever it is new api mm, mm. but unfortunately those tend to get abused that is why we have to be constantly on the vigil because ultimately they give extra you know there is there is an interesting judgment of uh, was a lone dissenter during the uh, world war the rights of the citizens in uk were severely suppressed mm. uk law before the british uh, and the learned everybody said no no these are emergency situation therefore we have to uphold this only one judge had the guts to say that the laws of england are not silent because there is a clash of arms he said even there is maybe an arm the rights are available to you. and there is a very famous judgment of the chief justice of the israeli court which is worth reading i think your students should be encouraged to read that just chief justice barak he was concerned with uh, the detention of some palestinian oh terrorists you know that constant issue between the israeli mm. and at the dead of the night he heard them and said that unless you show me some extraordinary reason why i should detain them i cannot suppress their rights they are allowed to free go and this being said not he did not say they are anti nationals therefore throw them in the jail that is why he is a great judge so today if i were to say this government is useless or somebody is useless i can't throw him to jail whether it is in the nine o'clock tv show or otherwise mm. so so can the government and then we'll go open uh, to the question and answer from the audience can government uh, yeah it's really fine can deterrence be in the form of here i'm creating an example i take an innocent man who is working for the good of people and because he's becoming painful for people over there you know exploitation can't take place and so on and so forth we put him in jail and create an example everybody chup baitho nahi to aapko bhi jail mein dalne wale hain can we talk can we can we tolerate this is there a way of the redressable point sir can we raise our voice i am so can the fourth uh, the fourth pillar yes. the fourth estate can the fourth estate become an important part of this whole process should, unfortunately there also you require somebody who has the guts to say it openly you require the editor who will say okay i'll print i'll allow this to come into my newspaper and the owner of the newspaper saying i'll allow this to be printed if i wait then the fourth estate is good it's not at least the judges should have this courage to say this See, the judge is required to, it is open for a newspaper publisher to say that these are views of mr so and so the yes but as far as the judge is concerned his job is to examine whether the views are good bad or indifferent make mm. a finding on that say where it uh, violates the law where it does not violate the law and then decide that is the great rule that is accorded to the judges and if they fail to exercise it well what can i say it is their job to do it they are obliged to do it that's why i repeat the word they are obliged to do it obliged and i am called upon to do something i am required to do it by law mm. i can't run away see that is why when it was required judges have worked at 12 o'clock on a saturday night or a sunday night yes and particularly please note 
this has been all the tradition of the judges in this country but when it comes to human rights and fundamental rights of citizens they have always kept it in the forefront saying all other things can come your property rights can all that come later on doesn't matter you can carry on for next two generations but fundamental rights has to be immediately decided that is why the supreme court has come into criticism because they did not take up all those issues mm. now what their problem is i don't know therefore i am not judging them but i am saying it has come into criticism there is one particular view which is says hey you can keep every, everything as a take up these issues first okay. so is it necessary that the press the media world be the watchdog hey, that is of exactly, dissent that is exactly their role no that is exactly their role I mean, but they are being hounded sir they are the media world is being hounded and therefore instead of being the watchdog they are becoming puppies no yeah yeah instead of being the watchdog they they, they have become the lap dogs i agree with you yeah are there one or two honorable exceptions yes i still hold one or two of them have the courage enough to say what to call a spade a spade mm. most of them have become that's because of you know the pressure put various ways the pressure is that uh, In the, in the good old days, it used to be the newsprint. Newsprint is not a big issue today. Yeah. The AFI, there could be for a small uh, or a medium uh, paper or a, a journalist. Government advertisement means a lot. Yeah. They may be totally removed, even for TVs. Then, then the other thing is nothing except one telephone call from. EBI director or the CAG or somebody in authority and the man will say, because the reason is this somebody always has something to hide and he's scared. If you have something to hide, you are scared of authority. You say, hey, let no man let me God get into. As they say in Hindi, it's a panga nee 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 kahe. Yeah. Mm. I don't have anything to hide. The Hindu saying is, "Khuda bhi darta hai nange ko." Hmm. <laughs> What can you? So, that's why I always said that you should have the courage to look anybody in the eye and say, "Well, I have said this. What do you want to do about it? I am not afraid of you. I am not. If God Himself were to come and ask me a question, I will be able to give an explanation to him. What, what about you? So, you have that kind of moral courage. Well, better institution. If you don't have it, we get what. Ultimately, we get what we deserve. Ultimately, that is the way we have to reconcile ourselves. so is there any kind of uh, advice that you would give students could you provide some sage advice for your students younger people are listening to you in terms of options and pathways they need to work towards to create a better political and social ethos in this country it's a tall order all right i don't know whether i am qualified to do that i'll attempt my best number 1 they need to believe that copy book maxim honesty is the best policy it's not merely in the copy book but you have to ingrain it in your conscience at every step of life now uh, you when introducing me you refer to my bad habit of quoting from sanskrit verses i can't help because this is something that was impressed upon me when i was a small kid my father taught me two things One of both of them are from Bhartrhari, a very renowned grammarian philosopher uh, of fourth century. The first, first one is uh, the question. In fact, whenever I ad- uh, ever address students, they ask me this question, or even uh, professional people like lawyers. They say, "All right, you are talking of everything, but what about money? The role of money?" Oh. My answer is very simple: Money is necessary. I am not saying, but is that the only thing? money is a means to happiness is it happiness by itself so this confusion between means and the goal is all that is a corrupting society happiness i see a man singing on the high road and sitting under the tree and eating some piece of bread he is happy now i can't be able to see the biggest industrialist he has thousands of worries on his head he can't even sleep a wink at night who is happy so He has uh, so many billions at his command. This man has only two rupees, which he will spend on the next meal. So, how do you judge happiness? The quick question is this: Are you intending to be happy? Then take the royal straight path. 
philosophy. One of the Greek philosophers said that in mathematics and philosophy, the straight path is always the best path. And the straight path is an honest path. And the other thing is, <laughs> so now that you, you expose my weakness, I have to de demonstrate it. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Bhartari said this, Akritva parasantapam agatva khalamandiram anutsrijya satam vartma yat svalpam api tadbahu. Great saying, I wish everybody in the country would repeat it every day. He says, without causing pain or distress to a fellow human being, akritva parasantapam agatva khalamandiram without having to go a begging to a crooked person. Please note what he's saying. Without going with a begging bowl to a crooked person. Anutsrijya satam vartma without deviating in the path of rectitude that people have shown us. It's swalpam api, whatever little you get, that bahu, it's more than enough for you. That is what he said, and this is what was impressed upon me when I was a kid, when I was four or five or six or something. The other one was a very humorous uh, anecdote between a uh, learned man and Lord Lady Lakshmi. You know, Lady Lakshmi, Diwali is coming around the corner. She is oh. the of pictures in India. So he says, Padme Murkha Janeshu Dada Sidravinam Vidvat Sukim Matsara. So he says, by definition, even judges are poor. Although they oh. So this man may be a primary, primary school teacher or a very learned man otherwise. He says, Oh Lady Lakshmi, why is it that you are always giving money to fools and ignoring people like me? So she laughs at him, gives him a very beatific smile and says, Naham matsarini nacha pichapala naivasti murke rati. He says, I am not jealous of you, and nor am I fickle minded as people allege, they allege me to be, nor do I have any special affinity for fools. But I confess, murke bhyo dravinam dadam in I always give money to fools. Tatkaranam suryatam. Please carefully listen to the reason. Vidwan sarvajane shupu jetatanuhu. A learned man is respected wherever he goes without irrespective of his bank balance. Murkhasya nanyagati. A fool is not respected, therefore I give him money so that he may earn some respect. <laughs> so I'll just look at the questions that have been asked of us. Um, I'll read or Ravi Chetri has said, in this age where government is hacking, is hijacking all forms of institutions, can we still rely on the judiciary or even, uh, even though it's compromised? Now, two reasons. One is that it has been compromised is a judgment, value judgment, which I am not prepared to accept. So I do not have enough evidence of that. Although there is quite a bit of talk about it. Number two, what other do, uh, uh, option do you have? You can't go to Caesar and cry before him. Mm. If somebody who is able to challenge Caesar, please go to that person. And the constitution has Look, when it will say judiciary is compromised, that is as good as saying that there are no honest persons in the world at all. Mm. I don't believe that. Even I would say if the country has 10% honest persons, and I say yes, it has 10% or probably even more, the country will still survive. So, yes, how did, how did Gandhi fight the British? How did he fight it? He didn't have anything else to fight. He had no AK-47. He had no uh, Simtex at the end of this. But he did, no? That is the moral courage that is necessary. Ultimately, truth will triumph. That's not a meaningless saying. Okay. There is another one that's come up. We got uh, at least about 16 of them. I'll choose and pick. Vinita Gom says, how does dissent, free speech, and government accountability work or function in a pandemic? <laughs> online. What else can I say? Online. Okay, and online raise this question. Now, what do you think you're doing? Oh, we are doing the same thing, no? De debating the role of dissent. How are we doing it? We are doing it online. Now, if everybody who is listening to this really takes it to heart, it is like throwing a stone in a pond. The ripple effect will certainly overcome all the difficulty. Pandemic is going to go one day or the other, isn't it? And with that hope, we keep on debating. We, we are not going to shut our minds because of the pandemic, although we may shut our doors to people. Pandemic is not a big issue. 
the big issue is the rot is elsewhere akanksha mishra asks should dissent coming in hate speech working on principle of father information reaches more harm it causes better it is for power be free and good in a democracy should dissent coming from hate speech be free or good in a democracy let me just again quote one paper thing from padma puran it says huyatam dharma sarvasyam chutva chaiva avadharyatam this is the essence of dharma dharma is what you know what is dharma i don't have to translate dharma i'll call it rectitude for the time being and please bear this in mind all the way he says the, the purana says he says whatever is bad for you don't do it to others if hate speech is bad for me don't do it to others atmana purani paresham na samachare whatever is bad for you please don't do it to others violence is bad for me i will not do it to others theft of my property is bad for me i will not thief okay, take uh, commit theft of somebody's property hate speech is bad for me i shall not utter a word of hate speech and i always if you remember i started by saying dissent should not degenerate into disrespect for human values yes remember what voltaire said that is the correct way of going about in the pandemic i am willing to die for your right to criticize me but you have that much of moral courage okay i don't think there is anything that should bother you at all This is an anonymous question. Are there limitations to dissent? When disagreements are about racism or granting human rights, are they acceptable? Yes. Sorry, come again. Yes, When disagreements are about racism, yes, or granting of human rights, are they acceptable? No. You, see, the point is this: they may not be. They may be unacceptable to you, but if he holds a view like that, supposing if somebody holds, for example, you know something very interesting in America, if Uh, not even a majority, a complete uh, uh, all the nine judges in what was the Dred versus Scott or something, they upheld the uh, upheld the contention of the government in the good old days, saying that the Negroes had no right of any kind. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, there's a very famous Dred oh. versus Dred versus Scott. Till it was reversed in that uh, George versus Brown education or something like that. Where he said, "No, it can't be then." And then the federal government went into busing and education and all. They took that view because that was the popular view at that time. So, if that happens, there should be somebody to dissent, and the dissent came maybe by the Supreme Court itself, two centuries down the line, not two centuries, maybe fifty years, sixty years down the line. Mm -hmm. That is dissent. That is the power of dissent. Somebody said, "Hurry, you can't harass just because the man is black." Am I going to say he has no human values? What happened in those days? Black people were thought, uh, why, for that matter, even Indians they considered they were not humans. They were treated in a inhuman manner. If you remember, in Bombay there used to be a board in that uh, what is that club there on the Bolabai? A uh, Hindu Hindu bath? No, not Hindu. Bolabai. They said or it had a British name on there. Radio club. Not radio, not radio. It said no admittance to dogs and Indians. Oh, yes. So that was the value that they gave it was. So if this is the yacht club, yacht club. No, no, not yacht club. Yacht club is a decent club. The the one on Bolabai they said, I used to be. A, I was appointed as administrator. Oh, Bombay Jam Khan. Bombay Jam Khan. Oh, please, not Bombay Jam Khan. It's very decent. Beach oh, Candy Bar. Beach Candy. Yeah, Beach Candy. Candy. Right. Beach Candy Club. That's correct. I forgot the name. Ah. Uh. Beach Candy Club, for till very recently, had this no admittance to uh, dogs and Indians. Dogs and Indians. And they put a second on that list, huh? Dogs and Indians. Yes, yeah, correct. First is dogs. At least Beach Club. <laughs> Dogs are better. Uh, See, that is the point. If you had not dissented it, that would still be there today. So somebody had the courage to dissent. Somebody had the courage to say this is utter nonsense. Then have it removed, then and there. That is the value of dissent. Sir Sandesh has this to ask of us: For right dissent, source of information is very crucial. In India today, it is a highly compromised situation. What is lacking? 
the source of information is not very easily available. Laws reform or just will of the government, will power of the government. I'll just read that again, sir. For right dissent, yes. source of information is very crucial. And in India today, it is highly compromised. What is lacking, asks Sandesh, law reforms or just the willpower of the government? No, no, neither of them. Your source of information today need not come from the government. I assume that you suspect that the source of information is suspect. You have your other means of communication. What do you think we are doing now? This, this is communication between you and me, which has nothing to do with the government. It is not filtered by the government. It is not censored by the government. Your freedom of association is there. You can have your club where you discuss the issue. You can discuss them in your canteen. You can discuss them uh, while going on the train. Of course, trains are not running now. While going in the bus or walking on the street. There is no question of this means of communication. Why do you assume that means of communication means only controlled TV and controlled uh, newspapers? Or you could even access what BBC says or what uh, CNN. CNN says, if you don't trust your own uh, news, news channel. At least they have an independent view of what is happening in the country. So why do you say that there are no news for it? Of course, there are news channels. The question is, do you want to take that at face value or this at face value? And who would be the arbitrator, sir, to say who, which, uh, which one, which value or which information each, is... That's why I said each one has an opinion. Each one may say, I may believe in racism. I told you. Yeah. That's my funeral. When 99.9% in the country don't believe in uh, Indians being equal to dogs, if I'm stupid enough to believe that, people will not interact with me. But you don't have to kill me for that. Not, you don't have to administer hemlock for that. Tell me, say, okay, this fellow is an idiot. He believes that. Let him leave him alone. If I were to, please look at this. If I were to dis disseminate this idea that Indians are equal to dogs, what will happen to me? Of course, now, it will, now you have got people will come and dash me up. They forget that. Mm. <laughs> people will dash me up. <laughs> this old man is stupid. He doesn't understand anything. He's got his idea. Just leave him alone. What happens? But why do you want to force me to change my idea? This is exactly the debate which has always taken place when one religion has tried to suppress another. Mm. Then this right of belief is sought to be taken away by saying, no, you believe in what I believe. I don't want to believe in what you believe. I believe in what I believe. Because I think but my belief has better merit. As a famous gang says, you continue to do what you think is right, and I continue to do what the good Lord thinks is right. So, there is a, another one over here. Yes. Abhay, Abhay Trivedi says, Sir, you spoke about veto power as an example of dissent. But aren't veto powers given to a few select countries Examples of dominance rather than dissent. Veto power was not, I didn't cite veto power as the power of dissent. I said there is a right of dissent in the UN General Assembly also, but unfortunately, veto power has been perpetuated because of the five permanent members. That's what I said. I didn't accept mm. veto power as the power of dissent. No, certainly not. But there is a dissent. India may protest against what is happening about recognition of something or the other, what Pakistan is doing, what China is doing. Mm. I may not be able to bring a resolution there because China may block it, US may block it if it doesn't like it, or uh, France may block it, one of the five permanent members may block it. But that's a historical oddity which you have to face. I, I think someday that will also get watered down. I don't know whether it will happen in this generation. Someday it will happen. Um, an anonymous one. In the case, in cases like ABM Jabalpur, yes. where citizens feel forsaken by both the judiciary and the government, what is one to do? Exactly what we did. Is the ADM good law? Good law today. Actually, it was dead law even after the, that. ADM talked of the diamond bright hope and the diamond bright uh, is that something else of the government and the idea that it will be a better feminist. It will do everything good and all that. And nobody really believed it. Despite the Supreme Court judgment, Things went on. And today, where are we? 
then there was the 47th amendment then there was the repeal of the whole thing then there was the uh, right of uh, trade petition was taken away 226 was amended no where are we now today we don't even recognize that as the correct view so this is dissent only thing is this is not dissent in the sense get up and throw bombs and say this is what is right no sir no it is evolved because what was the view that was taken by the supreme court has been demonstrated to be wrong slowly by evolution by dissent that is the power of dissent and yeah, i i don't want to go into this but in history oh for example just take this uh, keshwanand bharati's case what did it demonstrate it demonstrated the fundamental principle which cannot be taken away from the constitution that the that was a dissent in a previous judgment where the majority was against that view for a period of time it came out i give you the example of what happened in america dred versus scott where everybody all the nine judges voted in favor of saying that negroes have no rights at all and subsequently in george versus uh, george versus brown education or something where the supreme court by majority overruled that judgment and said no it cannot be done it has uh, it actually probably that's also a unanimous judgment saying that no every human being has a right the constitution guarantees them a right that is the power of dissent but that i am i never advocated that dissent should be by way of violence no sir if the violence takes away the good of dissent violence equates you to a criminal and then you get into thrown into jail or whatever the consequences so another one over here is sir how can ethics and legality be read together if the government follows something unethical aren't you obliged to follow it even after dissenting No, no. I, why should you follow what is unethical? I don't understand how. Le legal, yes, you have to require to follow because Parliament has approved law. You are under the law; it's stuck to you. You are to you are bound to it. Unethical? How? If the government says corruption is good, am I going to be corrupt now? If the government says that uh, doing some immoral act is good, am I going to follow that? I, I don't understand that. The question is that there's no basis. Government cannot say being unethical is good. which government has said it on the on the other hand they do it slyly they will not say it is good because they dare not say nobody in his right sense is going to say oh. killing is good for country or killing is good for country nobody will say that but they may do it that's a different man the difference between uh, practice and preaching is always there but i don't equate the two So, our students like Umar Khalid and intellectuals like Anand uh, uh, Telmunde just prisoners of conscience. See, unfortunately, they have. Um, I don't know about uh, what has been really said against them is that they were advocating the disintegration of the country and all that. Hmm. Now, if you look at it that way, disintegration of the country is not in anybody's interest. it is against the interest of everybody so the i'm not saying the government was right in what it did i'm just saying that one possible excuse or one possible argument in favor of what the government did was that hey if the test is that what you are doing is good for everybody is it good for everybody it's not good for everybody therefore they have to suffer the consequences of law that is the only way in which very charitable way in which i can justify it So we finished most of the questions. I just want to wind up with a lighter thing. Yeah. You know, ten languages. Is the word dissent? Yeah. Is the word dissent having the same kind of connotation, the same nuance across the languages that you know, sir? Please, in the Indian languages. In in the Indian language, what would it be, sir? In Sanskrit, what would it be? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure it out. What would you say, dissent? Ah, huh, dissent is called vipratipatti. Vipratipatti. Vipratipatti in Sanskrit means an objection, a dissent. Well, it is. I told you, I can show Breda and Nikopanishad. I can show Katopanishad. There is a constant dissent by somebody or the other. But not dissent in the sense uh, uh, degenerative in in the politics, calling each other names or anything of that sort. Mm. You see, for example, in Katopanishad, 
he, the, the story in Achiketa goes, his father is giving away arms and all that. He finds that it is useless thing that is gifting. So he got fed up. That is the first, first presenter. He goes to his father and says, Hey, dad, you are giving away useless cows as gift. You are giving away useless things as gift. Why don't you give something? Why don't you donate me? I'll go as a gift. So the father doesn't like it. He says, no, shut up, go away. Again, second time he goes and says, father, what you're doing is wrong. You're doing a wrong thing. He gets angry and says, I'll donate you to Yamaraj. Oh. So Yama is the god of death. So this boy takes it seriously, goes all the way to Yama's abode and sits there. And he asks him a question. And of course, Yama is not there. Yama is on official tour, I think. So he sits outside his door, waiting for three days. At the end of the tour, Yama comes back. His conscience pricks him. He says, this young boy is waiting here for me without any food or uh, water. I must be good to him. And then very graciously, he says, I'll give you food and water. He says, I don't want food and water. I want you to answer this question. He says, there is a debate. Some people say that when you are dead and gone, there is nothing else. Some people say there is something else. You tell me what is the correct answer. That is the debate which he starts. And then the whole thing goes on. That is the argumentative idea in Indian. Not giving gali to each other. And Emma is a very smart chap. No, Emma is like our politician. He said, yes. I don't ask me this kind of complicated questions. What do you want really? Your father is angry with you. I'll make sure that he doesn't get angry. I'll give you so many, yes. give you so many thousands of rupees. You please go away. Said, I don't want all this. You answer my question. He says, what do you want? She said, I want you to answer three questions. And each one of them is a solid question of philosophy on which the entire Indian philosophy has been built up. Then the Spanish and Italian, because uh, I, I know that. This is, this is misinformation. I didn't study. Oh, achha. I studied Russian when I was a very young boy. When I was still in my 20s. Can you recall the scent in Russian? No, I don't remember. Actually, I don't remember anything. It was way back in the... When I was in my 20s or something. Okay. Almost 60 years back. But right now, I'm studying Japanese. Oh, wow. So my teachers think that I'm crazy to be... <laughs> I said, no. Like she asked me the first question. She said, why are you studying Japanese? I said, very simple. Japanese has three ways of writing, three, three scripts. The katakana, the hiragana, and the kanji. And it has four ways of writing. You can write from left to right, right to left, top to bottom, and bottom to top. He says, what more can be challenging? And I can never resist a challenge in my life. That is my problem. That is why mm -hmm. I have gone into all kinds of things. I, when I started my commission, the first commission, which I did in 1992, I did the ABC of commission. And this was a clash of Hindus and Muslims. And I am yeah. practicing Hindu to the um, uh, religion on its forehead all the time. Yes, yes. So, the newspapers describe you that way. Yeah, rightly. For once, yeah. yeah. So my, I went, my, when the chief justice asked me, the chief justice was a lady at that time. He, she went through the list. Huh? The government wanted the name to be recommended. Uh. Thirty-five at that time, from the top, everyone said, "No, I don't want to do this." No, I don't. I was number three from the bottom. When it came to me, he called me and said, "Sir, can you do this?" I said, "I don't know anything about it." But I said, "I am known to be a practicing Hindu, and I will not swerve from my Hindu religion." Uh. And this is a constant strife between Hindus and Muslims. Do you think people will have faith in me? She asked me one one very important question. If when you put on your robes and sit in court, do you consider yourself Hindu, Muslim, or what? I said, no, I consider myself a judge. At that time, I'm an absolute judge, nothing else. He said, what is the problem? You can go ahead and do it. And by Joe, I did it. And I'm happy that that commission has been held up as a model for all others to follow. I didn't know anything, I it was scratch. Yeah. One thing in life is no challenge, I allow, go, allow to go wasted. Any challenge, I'll take it up. So similarly, I told my teacher and said, Japanese? She said, I'll learn about this. So if tomorrow, Chinese is made the official language of this country. Give me six months, I'll be able to proficiently argue. You are dissenter, sir? I'm a dissenter, yes. In fact, oh, I must tell you something very private. Because I was a dissenter, I became a, I became a lawyer. Oh. My father was a lawyer. I was studying physics. And I wanted to study nuclear physics and quantum physics and things like that. I passed my BSc. I applied for MSc to the Institute of Science. 
they said the money has to be paid after some dates or and it was a vacation period i was sitting at home it was vacation and my father was insisted everybody should be at the dinner then at dining table in the evening and some argument started and he said something which i couldn't stomach he said oh you can't be a good lawyer unless you have some special intellectual prowess or something i said hey what if you can be a lawyer i can be a better lawyer he said son waktum sukaram dushkaram adhya that's a beautiful thing he said it is easy to speak but it's difficult to do it in practice so okay next time morning i applied to law college uh-huh. i got my admission i great <laughs> professor What is the problem? Are you having financial difficulty? I'll talk to you. Uh huh. I said, "Don't you don't worry. Finance is not the problem." I was actually even explaining to him. He was very angry with you. He said, "You got good career because you know those were the days when atomic energy had been started." Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Me, Baba, was our model. He was a very strong one for the college. What are you doing? He was allowing a glorious career to go west. So I always say that the loss of the legal for legal field was the gain of the scientific world. <laughs> so, sir, thank you very much for being with us. We really enjoyed talking to you, and uh, we will learn honesty. The straight road is the best road. Absolutely. We will learn to be the perpetual argumentative Indian and the dissenter. But before I go, I want to tell you this. As I look at your face just now, you look like Joe Biden. Uh, Joe, <laughs> yeah, you really look like Joe Biden. Just now, that laugh of yours is making me think of Joe Biden all the time. I, I told you, you know, if you remember, I told you when I began that during the talk, if I wins, please pardon me because my shoulder was really hurt. Yeah, 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 yeah. I told you, but if I get involved in the talk, I might not. Yes. Yes. So, so notice the pain did not bother me even once. Yes, sir. So thank you very much. Thank you, our audience, for being with us. And sir, we look forward to once again interacting with you on some other issue. Thank you. Okay. So good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to see all these bright faces. The yes, sir. Other faces which I do not see on the screen. Yeah. But all of them. We thank all... you very much, sir. And you take care of your shoulders, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye, bye. Yeah. Abutala. Yes. Sir.